Aloha, everyone. I'm your host, Maria Mera, and uh, I'm also a financial advisor with Edward Jones. Today, in Spain, young and hard, um, we're going to cover um, the main topic, how to stay physically uh, healthy. And uh, my guest is Derek Chan. He's a physical therapist at South here in Honolulu. Uh, so welcome, Derek. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Thank you, Maria, for having me. Aloha. Um, let's, let's go into it. What is physical therapy? What is physical therapy? So as a physical th uh, therapist, uh, we help people move better so they can live a better life really optimize their movements uh, so they could achieve all the things that they want to do in their life, whether it's spending time with family or doing the activities that they once loved um, and doing it hopefully in a less painful manner. Okay, so um, what does, because I hear there is physical therapy, there is uh, chiropractors, there is kinesiologists, um, mm -hmm. what does, what, what, what do you use being a physical therapist? Well, as a physical therapist, we typically prescribe um, exercise, but we can also use different modalities, different hands-on treatments and so forth. So it sort of overlaps with a lot of other professions like massage therapist, uh, chiropractor, athletic trainer, and so forth, because we can use our hands to manipulate the soft tissue uh, and mm -hmm. the joints and also facilitate certain type of movements that we want or inhibit as well. Uh, so when it comes to, I guess, thinking about, let's say, chiropractic versus physical therapy, uh, the philosophy is different, but some of the treatments can be the same, such as joint manipulation uh, or soft tissue mobilization, um, massage, and so forth. And um, in terms of like exercise physiolog physiologists, um, those require a different degree, but again, it overlaps because we do physical, you know, exercising, you know, prescribing specific exercises for the specific problem that people may be having. Uh, so what does, what is the difference? What education does a physical mm -hmm. therapist need? Well, as a physical therapist um, in the US anyways, you need a, a bachelor's degree first. Usually uh, it takes an average of like four to five years for that. And it could be any sort of, um, education, like any bachelor's degree, as long as you complete that with the required uh, science courses required to, for physical therapy school. And the physical therapy school now is a three-year um, graduate degree. It's a doctor's degree. Um, and after that, you can start practicing. So after high school, it's roughly about seven years. Um, compared to, let's say, uh, athletic training, there are programs that are like, you know, bachelor's level and then there's master's level. With chiropractic, to my knowledge, it's um, after a bachelor's, then it's a four-year type of a doctor's degree, right? So. so for a physical therapist, if you're working in Hawaii, can you also go and work in California or any other state in the U.S.? Yes, yeah. So the great thing, you know, in, in the U.S., you know, in order to practice physical therapy, you attend a physical therapy education program and then once you get the degree, you have to take a um, national board exam. After you take that national board exam, then you're, you'll be qualified as a physical therapist to, to practice. Um, but in addition to that, depending on which state you want to practice in, you have to get a license for that specific mm -hmm. state. So, so you, you just get the license depending on the state where you want to exercise. Um, your yes. your mm -hmm. um so uh, for me and uh, again i come from europe and there is something very well known and actually mm -hmm. is very uh it's been very well known for in the last few years mostly and it's called dry needling and mm -hmm. i live in california and uh it wasn't allowed and uh mm -hmm. and i and now in hawaii i i i also uh, found out that it's not allowed either but uh, it's funny because it was it it was um, it's it's sort of like acupuncture, but it's like a really fast uh, insertion of the needle in the muscle that is very constrained to just release it. Uh, it was very effective for me. Um, longer story short, I it, it was discovered in in the U.S. So I wonder why some states uh, allow 
to use it while some others don't don't allow um, any any thoughts on that no that's that's a very good question uh, with dry needling yes it is using a a needle a particular size needle and it's to um, penetrate the skin to aim for a uh, tissue nodule right like like a knot per se yes. right right so th yeah. that's a philosophy again with dry needling from a physical therapy standpoint with acupuncture they have different philosophy you know different purpose they i don't know specifically how they practice but you know it may involve a different type of um, philosophy like you know the meridians and the chi i have no idea but um it, it, <laughs> but it's it has a different philosophy basically and it's different in different states because um there's different state practice laws in certain states like California and Hawaii, um, I guess it, it there's a strong, I guess, acupuncture community. And um, that's one of the uh, communities that may sort of be hesitant to a lot of physical therapy. Fight back. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. It, 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 when it comes to like <laughs> politics, right? Like, it, yeah. It, people want to protect their own turfs. Um, yeah. Yeah, even though like in Europe or in other states, you know, they do physical therapists or physiotherapists, they do practice dry needling quite often. So unfortunately, it's what, just a state thing. What about other, um, other therapies that might not be as, uh, they might not be forbidden to use in the, in the state, but they are not used like radio frequency or uh, UV or, or I don't know, aqua therapy or something like that. It seems like um, there's differences in depending on where you practice physical therapy. In terms of using those type of modalities, like, you know, the laser ultrasound and all those things, uh, most of the time physical therapists can use those in, in every state. Uh, it's a matter of whether the the therapist wants to use it and whether they, yeah, they use it effectively because in a lot of research, for example, for example, like ultrasound, it doesn't really show hard research that it's going to work effectively versus, you know, just exercising in a particular way and loading the tendon up like that will help more. So um, as a physical therapist, we have to practice evidence-based practice. So we got to make sure that we're, giving you the treatments that's going to help. We're not just going to give you something that might feel good or, you know, just lather on some, you know, gel so that, oh, it's going to help. You, you mostly focus on the exercise, right? Uh, for me, it depends on the situation, but there's always going to be exercise involved. So how, how important is exercise in, in the life of a person? You know, it's, it's actually very important. So important that exercise should be a daily habit in our in our lives um, that way we can you know move better ultimately get stronger and you know stay young at heart right <laughs> like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah that <laughs> circles back um yeah. so what exercise is good you recommend if you're saying we need to practice daily and uh, and and sometimes because we practice something daily we mm. get more injured or I'm, I'm at least one living yeah. uh, proof of that so what what exercise is good that uh you would you would you could recommend to anyone and you could be in a safe um that you you know you're safe that you can do every day and it's uh, and you're good well, every day exercising that's safe for everyone. Uh, just general walking is good. You know, like I know the American Health Association recommends like five times a day, at least like 30 minutes of moderate exercise. That's really good for the heart in general. Uh, stretching is good for everyone because as we get older, we get stiffer. Uh, so we need to make sure we stay flexible. If not, it's going to limit our range of motion. And when we do certain motions, if we don't have that range of motion, then it's going to put stress elsewhere in our bodies and it will um, eventually accumulate to more damage and strain in our bodies. So stretching, so, walking, that's good too. Mm -hmm. 
yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um completely agree i think walking walking is one of the best exercises that you can do mm. and uh and people just don't underestimate it True. um what what do you believe about applications like uh these phones that keep tracking you and telling you get up and move or mm. or they keep uh, do you have any opinion on that yeah i mean like some people really um dislike technology and they think it might um it, it is a distraction but it, it's just another tool and it depends on how you use it with certain phones or watches that give you like an option or feature to track yourself especially when it comes to your well-being is pretty awesome because for example there's um on your watch or phone it tracks on how many like you're walking your steps right so yeah. it can really show you how, like how active you are. A lot of times, mm -hmm. um, we don't know it, but we might be sitting for eight hours a day, and that's very detrimental to our health. Just yeah. sitting a lot, right? So it's important to get moving, to watch the step, um, and increase the step count because that's the more active you are, the better you are. Right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I'm, I'm very active, and I've always been told to rest. And but it, it is true what you're saying that sometimes it's that get up and walk for one minute because one thing is that you might be exercising for two hours, but the other thing is that you might also be seated for two hours. So it's uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's that that that's probably not the healthiest uh, thing to do. That's true. You know, the more you move, the better your joints will become lubricated and then you'll maintain that flexibility and you know like they say motion is lotion or it's, it's what oh. we say <laughs> okay I, I never heard that but I'll, I'll take it um so what about the 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 other the radical um uh the other side of the spectrum uh I heard this uh, one physical therapist actually his name is Sergio Florian and uh, he was running I don't know if you heard he was running the perimeter of uh, Oahu so oh, yes I did five uh, miles did you hear, did you hear that yes, he did it I in 24 hours um I I am not convinced and I would love to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. is is that is that healthy to run 135 mile, uh, miles so it's um it's good if you train for it it's not a bad thing if you like run that much, right? Uh, although research has shown that um, for the typical athletes, if they run like more than a certain amount of miles, like 20, 30 miles every week, and you keep doing that consistently until you get older, they do fi find that your joints do wear out a little faster compared to the average recreational runner, right? But then yeah. the, yeah, but cool. uh, the, person who are more, who's more sedentary actually has the most wear and tear on their type of joints is what so they found mm -hmm. the, uh, but is there is there a right balance i i know very few people mm -hmm. who run every day mm -hmm. who don't get injured right yeah so it, it's it's you will get you have more chances of getting injured if you run more mileage, of course, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, just a healthy amount, you know, five, 10 miles every day. And as long as you train your body for it, then your body can handle it. So it's all about your training patterns and are you able to, you know, train up to that tolerance. Okay, let's go to do, uh, let's have a little break here. And I want to um, get a little bit of uh, your idea when we come back about what influence did COVID-19 have in our in, in our activity? But um, let's let's do a break, and we'll be back with Derek in a in a minute.
Welcome back. We are continuing our conversation with Derek Chan, physical therapist and at Staub. Um, so Derek, we were mentioning right before the break, um, what, what happened during COVID-19 to our physical health? Oh, physical health. With COVID-19, <laughs> it was definitely something unexpected. And um, as a physical therapist, I noticed a lot of patients um, have become less active, you know, or they are getting into these poor habits and postures because a lot of people started working from home. And at home, their setup is not necessarily you know, ergonomically friendly, like if they were at work. So I, I, I've noticed a trend where patients have, get, uh, have been getting more neck pain, back pain, maybe even shoulder pain because of all the, all the sitting and improper um, placements for their work desk at home. What, what were you seeing before COVID-19? Was it um, different type of uh, injuries? Well, in the hospital, we always see a different uh, varieties of injuries, you know, from joint replacement um, and just general back pain, neck pain and all that. Uh, but the, it was for our patient population, it was more arthritic and this, you know, aging aches and pains and all that. But now it's just like younger people coming in um, and with aches and pains because of this inactivity or improper sitting or posture. Oh, and also less surgeries because um, we had to stop some of the elective surgeries too. What do you think um, uh, about telehealth, right? Is that how you call it, like uh, right. for, for physical therapy? Physical therapy, it's, it's awesome. Anything with telehealth nowadays, it's, it's an opportunity to really um, get our services across the, the state, nation, even the world. And um, it's definitely going to be the future, especially with a lot of folks who may not be able to like um, commute, uh, commute to the physical location. Maybe they live in a rural area, live very far mm -hmm. from the city maybe. So it, it, it'll be very useful. Or um, even in our everyday lives with working professionals, they might be very busy throughout the, their work week and they might not have time. They may just have like 15 minutes of just chatting on, on, the, on their phone. And that would be so, like useful for them, you know, in between like their uh, appointments, they could easily just talk to uh, someone on the phone, just telehealth, like the provider, and that would work great. Yeah, I mean, 15 minutes every day at the end of the week, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a lot of time. So um, what about prescri prescription? Can you prescribe uh, a patient or with like medications you mean yeah yeah as a physical therapist no as a physical therapist no we don't prescribe medications uh in the okay. u.s anyways um mm -hmm. I, I know in the uk they started that practice they, they are able to prescribe certain medications with additional certification yeah um also in in spain at least they can oh, prescribe really? some yeah yeah they they not 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 like a doctor, but mm -hmm. or like a orthopedic, uh, like a sports mm -hmm. medicine doctor. But yeah, there there are some um, that you can you can prescribe as a physical therapist. But don't quote me here, but I, mm -hmm. I I've had physical therapists prescribing me. Um, what about and this is another topic that to me um, I, I I don't always see the benefit of it. But mm -hmm. so I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about um, these steroid steroid injections that seems like it's the go to for every injury nowadays? Oh, really? Yeah, that's uh, it, it, it's unfortunate that some people will choose that as first line of defense like and, and treatment because um, steroid injections are very useful to calm down inflammation, especially if the patient's tolerance is very low. Um, and it, it's okay to use it in, in the beginning, but it shouldn't be dependent on it. I've had patients mm -hmm. where they um, became so dependent on it. And of course, with steroid injection, injections, you can only have a certain amount every year. 
But after they're done with that and pain keeps coming back, what are you going to do, right? Um, yeah. And if it's like a muscle or tendon problem, right, you, you have to train it, um, especially if it's appropriate for training. But um, I, I see a lot of patients never having physical therapy and first line of um, treatment was just steroid injections three, four times a year. And then um, it actually degrades your tendon slightly. Yeah, uh, yeah, the time. more, the more, the, the, if mm -hmm. you abuse it, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, so that doesn't really help. And then it just makes your muscles weaker because it degrades your tendon. Um, so so uh, do, you, do you have a lot of like, um, like fight, fighting back or disagreements mm -hmm. with doctors who you see that they are um, doing that for the patient because the patient can tolerate the pain. And uh, is there any dialogue between the doctor and you guys just um, with this or with anything else? Like uh, well, maybe... Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I've worked in um, hospital systems like um, Kaiser and Straub right now uh, who are very... Who, who have physicians who are very receptive um, to communication. So I've never had that um, issue because the, the physicians uh, know that, you know, it's important to have like a good communication among different disciplines in healthcare to really take care of the, the patient. So it's, it's imperative to actually make sure that the patient knows um, there's a team behind him or her for the care and it's just not one person making all the decisions do you do you think there is a physical literacy in uh in, in hawaii or um do you think people know their bodies i'm sorry uh could you repeat that uh i i was making up this term of uh, do you think there is a physical <laughs> literacy like people know what a muscle is or what are uh, the difference between a ligament and a, uh, and a tendon or do they, do they know anatomy? Oh, right, yeah, no, I, I, I think um, it, people don't really know their bodies and what a muscle is or what a tendon is. Um, in the beginning, I, I, I thought it was like, oh, it's common knowledge with it, but it's, it's just because I'm in the field and I've studied it. Um, some people think that certain parts are the muscle or the tendon or even a ligament. Um, yeah. So not enough people know it. Even if you took PE in, in high school or middle school or whatever, it's, it's not the same, especially when it comes to injuries. So Yeah. So what, what would be your advice to people out there to get to know our bodies better? To get to know your bodies better, definitely number one, you should see um, your doctor for it, see a physical therapist to understand how your body's moving. When it comes to hu mm -hmm. human movement, um, relating to your everyday life, the physical therapists are, are the ones who, who do the movement analysis and so forth. Um, and yeah, that was number two is just, yeah, number one, see a doctor, number two is see a physical therapist. Number three is really move and be a little more physical so you can understand your body and you understand how it works. Not only not only if you're an athlete, but yes, as a, as a regular person doing regular activities, you should you should at least um, mm -hmm. look for a little bit of education, right? Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, there's a big difference between like athletes and you know sedentary people, and the only difference is the movement. Do you can you see as patients are, are they are better patients for you as uh, are athletes better patients are or they are more impatient or um, do you think there is a difference as a physical therapist can you can you see some people reacting better than others? In in terms of behavior, I think it's very individual. <laughs> you know, the individual can be patient or uh, willing to learn and whatnot. But the main difference between an athlete and between someone who as an exercise is there um, an athlete understands their bodies a little bit better um, so they can activate certain muscles uh, in a better sequencing and um, it, it's easier for them just because they've moved so much they understand how to move yeah uh, what about pain i think athletes are more used to tolerate pain uh like if, if you're a runner you're you're suffering mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and just run through the pain uh is that a good thing to to 
ignore the pain and just keep pushing yourself? Yeah, no, like if there's a certain amount that you should, that you can push yourself off before they say, oh, no pain, no gain. Yeah, that's true with when it comes to like muscle development and when you're young. But once you're getting older, you, if you're putting too much strain on a certain joint or muscle, then you might even go into that uh, injury zone, right? Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, it, it can even actually be, um, worse for your body if you kind of keep pushing that way because then your body will become very sensitive to the pain and you're putting more strain to it so listen listen to the pain there or listen to your body i heard this um sentence from a massage therapist in san diego and i always i i kept it as a um there is such a thing as good pain and bad pain, right? Some, mm. some of it, like if they are giving you a deep tissue massage, that mm. hurts, but it's, it's actually a good pain versus mm. running and your knee hurts, uh, that, that would be a bad pain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the description of pain is very important. So I communicate with my patients and making sure that it, you know, it, it feels like a, a good type of pain per se. If it's a bad pain, like it's, the sharp numb and all that that's that's not really good for it yeah so why why pain comes right away and then it takes so long to go right it seems like yeah. uh, in one day you get injured and then it takes mm -hmm. four months to finally get rid of it yeah well uh, you know pain is not necessarily always a bad thing in fact it's just an alarm system in our bodies that uh, lets us know, oh, something's not right. Um, and it's, it's healthy. You know, that means you're alive if you can feel pain. <laughs> because okay. if you don't feel pain, then, it, then you might do dangerous activities like, you know, leaving your hand on a hot stove and it's just going to cause more pain, right? So it's an alarm system for us to protect us. Sometimes, um, depending on how much uh, an injury or how much damage it's caused, and it may take more time to um, to actually recover. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. when that is activated, right, that pain system, sometimes it sort of lingers a little longer. So this alarm system stays a little longer and it turns on um, and alerts you a lot more. And um, that's how you, it starts to go into like a chronic pain pattern because then you you'd think of it as like oh it's very sensitive and every time you do certain things it's just going to immediately just spike and you're going to feel the pain um but that's why you have to understand how pain works because you have to understand that it will heal and the things that you do may seem sensitive but small introduction back to the the activity can mm -hmm. help um, reintroduce that stimulus to your body and it'll adjust it back depending on how long it has been and what activities that you do and that's uh one that's what i was going to ask you um mm -hmm. when when do we consider it a chronic illness versus an acute episode right when when healthcare providers use those terms like acute subacute or chronic they usually go with time frame um you know a, Acute could be anywhere from less than a, a month, and chronic could be anything from more than three months considered chronic. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it, but it, it depends on the condition. Whether are you when you have the the injury, are you still doing things that injure it, and that's why it's accumulating that injury, or is it like even though you rest but you still have pain? Okay, it could be chronic, but is it because you're not putting enough load to it? You're not introducing it back to your body so that's why your body's not used to it and that's why it feels um that discomfort and sends these take pain signals to you so yeah most of the time it will become um our bodies heal so just know that our bodies will heal um and you have to give it time you have to protect it you have to uh, load it up again and and keep the faith um Derek, you you've been my physical therapist is in a number of occasions so I, I i would like you to um and 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 definitely keep the faith is it was very important to me and yes um 
trusting trusting the process. So I would like you to um, to to just as a goodbye to our audience is give give a couple of advices or or um, whatever you want to tell to patients out there or mm. or potential <laughs> people who can who, who might get injured in the future. Right. Yeah. So it's definitely a pleasure to work with you and um, with patients or whoever is seeking care from a physical therapist. If it doesn't work out at first, don't stop. Don't assume that, you know, um, don't generalize that. Oh, physical therapy doesn't work. Definitely. You have to keep searching because everyone practices a little differently. And that's what gives you the right as a patient to seek second opinion, third opinions, maybe even fourth. Um, and you have to make sure that you understand what you're going through and don't just assume that, oh, just because someone is uh, a healthcare professional, they're going to do this um, procedure on you or give you these treatments and it should make it work. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you have to sort of, uh, you have to understand it, understand your condition yourself. So I try to educate my patient so they understand how they're going to get better by themselves yeah. using these exercises. Mm -hmm. and, and you do a great, a great work. I'm not just saying this, oh. I'm, I, I'm, I'm living it. <laughs> I'm, living, <laughs> I'm living the process. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Derek. I, uh, if, if anyone wants to contact you, what's the best way? If anyone wants to contact me, uh, they could reach me on my Instagram. You know, send me a DM. It's uh, Derek underscore Chun. Pretty easy to find me. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Derek. Thanks for uh, sharing your knowledge and spending uh, your generosity with your time. Oh, and, no, thank you um, so much for having me. <laughs> of course, our pleasure. And to everybody else, uh, just keep moving. Moving um, uh, motion is lotion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, uh, we'll see you in the, in the next episode of, of Staying Young at Heart. Until then, um, keep moving. Aloha.